This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 2, this is Section 5, Part 2. Concern for the Body, Part 2. Defense is frightening. It stems from fear, increasing fear as each defense is made. You think it offers safety, yet it speaks of fear made real and terror justified. Is it not strange you do not pause to ask as you elaborate your plans and make your armor thicker? and your locks more tight, what you defend, and how, and against what. Workbook Lesson 135 That is what it takes sometimes when the mind seems to go, go, go into its defensive maneuvers. Just pause for a reflective moment. It can seem frightening because it can seem like it is too big a ball of wax. Jesus is asking me to look at every belief that I hold in my mind. At times it seems easier to just go through some of the defences and preparations like I have always gone. You know, you have gotten through this before. That can be the ego saying, You have done this before. Go ahead. But the point of release comes by pausing and doing what we are doing right now. Taking a look at it. He asks us a question about pausing to ask what we defend and how and against what. Here we go. Let us consider first what you defend. It must be something that is very weak and easily assaulted. It must be something made easy prey unable to protect itself and needing your defense. What but the body has such frailty that constant care and watchful deep concern are needful to protect its little life? What but the body falters and must fail to serve the Son of God as worthy host. Workbook Lesson 135 Friend Okay, what is coming up for me is that I was reading about a serial killer who was being executed. I have a 15-year-old boy, so as I am reading this, There are lots of places where I need to pause. Where I become weak is the thought that my son could be hitchhiking and then a serial killer could pick him up and gruesomely murder him. So I have to go to the fact that bodies are not real. But just the thought of that. What I am defending is that I think that this has such reality. David It is very frightening, just the thought of letting it into the consciousness. Friend It is, and to just let let this go seems frightening. I have even thought that this body needs me to take care of it, and if I do not, It is just going to go to pieces. 
In the next breath, I think about all the times when my mind was not on my body and a symptom never occurred because my mind was not focused on a symptom. It was not focused on the body. This is big because this is happening right now with the body. The hitchhiking and the whole thing. It is very hard for me to let go. I can see the freedom in letting go. But I do not have that right now. Yet the other night I said to my friend, You cannot tell me I am not a body. And she said, I am not going to sit here and align with that thought with you. I asked her, If I am not a body, then what am I? She said, My friend, you are a mind. That really clicked in for me. I feel like that made a really big shift. The Holy Spirit was operating that night for sure. I have heard that so many times before and then all of a sudden it was just like, Oh, yes! David Yes, the thought that keeps coming is how helpful it is to come together and talk about perceptions, beliefs and thoughts. Minds have beliefs, perceptions and thoughts. When we continually keep tracing them back, there has to come a time when there is an experiential shift. A feeling of a loosening and a lightening from it. You can talk about a right mind and a wrong mind. From the wrong mind's perspective, the body is the reality and bodies have private minds. Each body has a private mind associated with it and a higher wrong mind perspective is where you get into that stuff about souls and mind, body and spirit and a lot of the mixture of things which is still the wrong mind. We want to really lift this above the battlefield, which is where the right mind is. It knows without a doubt that I am mind and that all of these images and projections and false concepts and beliefs are not me. It has a good view from above. Perched above it can see the wrong mind. The entire world and the cosmos. And each thing we do is an attempt to get clearer and clearer. If you come from a nursing background, you will need to see that the whole thing with the body, neurology and the brain and all those things that are seen as common wisdom are not wisdom at all. It takes coming from a higher perspective to start to see the fallacy of it. That is a great leap. Just keep at it. Friend, another body thing that came up this weekend was the idea of abortion. I have seen the baby inside on the monitor and I have thought, that is a body in there. I can see how it is forming. 
this body thing is really hitting me. It is a little bit disorienting. Nothing is making sense. In fact, my body is falling apart, which is completely disorienting. My husband and I were talking about a career, and I said, Nobody would hire me right now. I could not complete a task. I cannot even think about working. A whole other fear is my daughter's education. There was a great big thing in the newspaper the other day about education costs having gone up 9.4%. I have not let that go. I believe it is very important for her to get an education. My fear is if I become a Course in Miracles teacher and if I am not making any money, I am letting everybody down. That is where I am at. And all this is coming up. It is creating havoc right now. David The Course keeps coming back to perception. It is saying that your perception is twisted. What you conceive of as a good future and good education, a good way of growing up for your children, for other children, that is all a construct. In the beginning, just do whatever you can to bring it back to the idea that it is a perceptual problem. It can seem like a long stretch to wonder how a solution to your perceptual problem can handle your daughter's college costs. I remember your son asking you, Mom, do I have to go to college or can I just study A Course in Miracles? That is certainly a different twist. The theme is that there is something deeper that may not fit into the structure of how society and the world are constructed. Friend, the idea of planning the future is very rattling for me right now in terms of career. I just finished this degree but what am I going to do with it? And how is it ever going to make any sense? Then I find myself falling back into the trap of the world. That I have come this far with school. That everybody thinks that this is necessary. And my kids have needs. But it is about trust. Again, I have to come back to that sense of Christ strength instead of ego weakness. Because ego weakness can really make me feel very vulnerable. David There was a gentleman at a retreat who had been drinking before he studied the course. He said, now the course is my comforter instead of the alcohol. But it was also the same gentleman that said, If Jesus lived today, I do not know if he could get a date. I mean, he walks around and he is talking about the kingdom of heaven and he is saying to leave everything behind and follow him. I do not know how many guys could get a date with that. He even told his apostles to leave their jobs and not work. We will keep going into the metaphysics, which are the underpinnings for all this. But until the mind can loosen up enough, 
to let some of these things in. It needs symbols. That is why I would recommend reading the Urantia book, part 4. Jesus goes through a training period and continues to question things while still engaged with what seems to be his family. It describes how he is helping to take care of the children, his younger siblings, teaching them, not not abdicating responsibilities. Further, as he goes along and even leaves the family, he seems to prepare them for his leaving. Then he calls on the apostles. Some of them are married. Thomas is married and has kids. And Peter has three kids. Once again, it is very similar to the situation that our friend is in. She is studying a course in miracles. She is being called by Jesus just as directly as if he had come and knocked on her front door and said, Follow me. She seems to have a family, as did Peter and Thomas and others. But he is calling them into an intensive teaching learning situation where they are focusing on these high ideas. Make no bones about it. That is a very important calling. They go back for periods of time to visit their families. Didn't Thomas or Peter feel feelings of loss? I was just reading in the Urantia book part 4 that Thomas was such a moody fellow that when he got called to go off and follow the apostles, his wife thought, Yea, go with my blessing. That is a different twist. That is what our friend is going through now in the sense that her husband is starting to talk about what is going on. There are all these interpretations from those who see themselves as mothers. They are angry at her. From their perspective as mothers, they find her choices very threatening. Another gentleman who her husband talked to said, Well, she must have a man in another city. Why would anyone leave so urgently? There are all these different interpretations, as there may be with you and your husband when you can lay it on the table and say, Here is what is going on. Her husband is at the point where he understands that it is not a man she is going to or that she is leaving her children, or that she is a vicious mother who never has cared for or shown an interest in her children. He knows that there is something much deeper that she is called to. The conversations continue, but there is still the fear There are physical symptoms and all kind of ways that it manifests. The Urantia book, part 4, was a great help to me as far as putting it all into a larger perspective. I started to feel disoriented at times with the course because I did not know where it was guiding me. The Urantia book part 4 gave me a bigger swath 
of how things are unfolding. A stepping stone towards letting go is to not put a lot of credence in the future or to even plan at all. Friend, this weekend I was observing my parents. I was on the workbook lesson The Power of Decision is My Own. Workbook Lesson 152 I said, Dad, it is an opportunity. He knows I am in this and it is like the opportunity to bait me almost. I felt like I just wanted to leave and he was saying, We are all inspired. I believe that we are all inspired. And I said, That is true, Dad. And I tried to find common ground. I said, According to the course, which is something that has been really dear to me and helped me to understand these concepts, the Holy Spirit came in when we separated and it was given to us. He said, Well now, that has got to be the biggest joke I have ever heard. This is a very powerful experience for me because my dad wrote a book called What is Truth? He has been lecturing and preaching to me all my life and now that I am in this, I am seeing that he is really very fearful. The power of decision is my own kept coming in. I wanted this lesson to be for him. I kept explaining to him and it kept coming back. The power of decision is my own. This is my own lesson. I am talking to myself. I kept thinking, if he would get this lesson, I could come home and we could talk about this. He loves to talk about things. If he could get this lesson, we could discuss this. But then I realized that I was not getting this. When I get this, we might be able to discuss it. I have been looking at control too. I was observing my mother calling everybody on the phone to go to church with her. Then I realized how much control I have had over my family, over my husband and my house. When I saw the intensity of my desire for my father to look at the idea that the power of decision is my own, I began to see how many control issues I really have. I even left the book open when I went for my walk so he could read it. I mean, do you hear that? David The course is a new belief system and something you feel like. Here it is, guys. Now if you could just get this. But even the theology of how the separation happened is just theology. Because Jesus says it never really happened at all. So he is giving his own little story that the mind can kind of grab onto as something to believe in for a while. But in the end, there is an experience that will come. Everything else has to fall away, even the coarse stories. But the whole thing of wanting to be right, to control, is something to go into very deeply. Reading the introduction to the clarification of terms is helpful. It says that those who seek controversy 
will certainly find it. And those who seek clarity will find that as well. As long as they are willing to overlook controversy. It is really only in the experience rather than the theology that consistency is found. The uncertainty only ends once there is an experience. The temptation in the beginning can be to try to put it into a theological framework. But that is not ever going to bring peace. It is very direct. You could read that section before you go visit your dad. Friend, in my defenselessness my safety lies. Workbook Lesson 153 is the lesson for today. There is a sentence that says, Defenses are the costliest of all the prices which the ego would exact. In them lies madness in a form so grim that hope of sanity seems to be an idle dream beyond the possible. Workbook Lesson 153, Para 4 That sentence has been on my mind. I wonder if this is an idle dream that may really be impossible for me. Maybe it is possible for you. But then, I have to come back to seeing that I can either play right into that, with that ego weakness, or I can keep the Christ strength. What helped me today was thinking to myself, Okay, you can sit there and be this little weak thing, going to all these doctors, or you can be strong and see what you are supposed to learn from this experience. We will continue with the third and final part of this section in the next episode.